So Subuti is fully appreciative. He's right in the moment and full of wonder in the presence of the Buddha, full of gratitude. And out of the fullness of that, he asks a question, a real question. Not a clever, clever question, but a real, practical, necessary question. He asks, How then, O Lord, should a son or daughter of good family who have set out in the Bodhisattva vehicle, or set out on the Bodhisattva path, how should they stand, how progress, how control their thoughts? So how should a son or daughter of good family who have set out in the Bodhisattva vehicle, how sh should they stand, how progress, how control their thoughts? So first of all we got this phrase, son or daughter of good family. Um, might be sort of wondering if you're a son, well, you're definitely not a daughter of good family, but a son or of good family. Um, you often find this phrase in Mahayana Sutras. They talk a lot about uh, being of good family, lineage, very, very important in India, in traditional societies. You, you come from a good background. Um, but I think you could look at it actually in a different way. I think that... Uh, you know, if you think that you come from a bad family, and you might come from a bad family, you might think that you're not qualified to uh, receive this teaching, which would uh, really be to miss the point. The real point here is that you're well endowed, if you like. You're, you're well endowed, well equipped to receive this teaching. Um, you're a friendly, reasonably together kind of person. What's really being said here is that you need to be in a good state to practice the Dharma. You need to be in a good state to listen to the Dharma, you need to be reasonably aware, reasonably friendly, reasonably clear, and so on. You know, again, it's a, a, a point to do with preparation. To practice well, to study well, to meditate well, to see into things, you need to gather yourself together. Uh, you need to, you know, sort yourself out a bit. Uh, maybe for many of us, that itself will be our practice. That itself will be our practice, just getting ourselves together. Subhuti's question is how such a person who's set out on, who's committed themselves to the Bodhisattva path, to the Bodhisattva way, how such a one stands, progresses and controls their thoughts. So the Bodhisattva is one who's set out on the Bodhisattva path, someone who's committed to gaining enlightenment for all beings, not just for themselves, but for the benefit of all. It might seem, when you hear that, that it's uh, irrelevant. Um, yeah, we're, surely we're just trying to get ourselves together. But no, no, it's not the case. If we set out on the Buddhist path, and all of us here, in one way or another, to one degree or, of, or another, have probably set out on something we might call a Buddhist path, that means there's something of the Bodhisattva in us all. The fact that we're attracted to come on a retreat like this, to do this retreat, to study this text. That means there's something of the Bodhisattva in us all. It doesn't matter you know, how untogether we may be. The fact is, if we're attracted to this, to some extent we've set out on the Bodhisattva path, on the Buddhist path. There's some movement towards awakening. There's some movement of awakening. There's some movement in awareness and friendliness. If it's truly a Buddhist path that we set out on, it's a bodhisattva path, because it's an, a movement in awareness and friendliness. There's some sort of commitment to continuous spiritual growth, embracing others, whoever you meet.